Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Now today on this video, it is my mission to try to get you to try Inkscape if you haven't done so before. It's a free design software and it is fabulous. If you tried to use it before, it was updated earlier this year and it is much more user friendly. So go ahead and install it on your computer and follow along with me on this video. Now this is what the opening screen of Inkscape in the version 1.0 looks like on my screen. And this rectangle here is just a built-in template. It's defaulted to a regular size piece of paper. Typically I just ignore it because I really don't care what size of background I'm using because I'm doing something small like earrings or, or other small designs. In this case, I'm going to show you how to change this. And I just learned this a couple days ago. Go up to File, Document Properties, then I'm going to use a custom size. So I'm going to change the units to inches. You hold down and then slide it up and release and it changes it to inches. The width of the board that I'm using is 7.75. And the height that I'm using is 15 and a half. So I click return and then I can just close this document property screen. So here's what I'm working with. So to zoom in on it, hit the select tool, click on your screen, hold the shift key down and hit the plus sign. First thing I want to do is click over on the text tool. I'll click on that and then I'll just go over here where I think I want to start. I can always move it later. You can drag it around so it really doesn't matter if it's not exactly in the right place. I'll click on it and now I can type. I'm going to use all caps so I'm hitting the caps lock and then I'm going to hit the return button after each letter. I'll type the word home For my design, I want to use the font blue. So I'll click apply. Then to do anything with this, I have to go up here and click on the select tool. And then I'm just going to drag to make it a lot bigger. Now, I wish I would have locked the proportions. So I'm going to go back. You can lock the proportions right here. Now if I drag, everything stays the way it should. If you've used Cricut Design Space, you know that to slice one thing out of another, you have to have just two objects. So I need to get this to one object, and that'll take just a couple of steps. This will allow you to do something very similar to the weld function in Cricut Design Space. In Inkscape, it's called Union. But you cannot just go to Union and weld these together now. So to be able to weld these together, First, you go up to Path, click on Object to Path, then you go to Object and Ungroup. Now, if I wanted to weld these together now, I could. But before I weld them together, I want to move them around. So you click off of them, then you can click back on one and move it. I'm going to move it just generally where I think I want it. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to use the Align tool to perfect it in a minute. Now I don't like how this E is much thinner than everything else. So I want to stretch it wider. I see up here right now the proportions are locked. So if I stretch it wider, it's also going to get taller and I don't want that. So I'll unlock, then I can just stretch the width. And for the final product, I think this is just going to look better. So I'll go ahead and click outside of that. Now, to align these so they're all centered and they have equal spacing between each letter, you just drag around the whole word. To be able to do that, you have to have this Select and Transform Objects selected. So if it's not grayed out, just click on it and then you can do what I just did. So I slid around everything. Notice all those are still separate. You can barely tell that there are dashed lines between the letters. So I'll click right here on Align and Distribute. And here are my options. So I want to align them so that the centers will be in the same place going up and down. 
Okay, so everything shifted a little bit just so they're centered on top of each other. Then I want to distribute them equally. And I use this one right here. I love the picture because it shows you what you're doing. I don't expect them to move a lot, but they will shift a little bit. There we go. Now it's time to go ahead and weld these. So I go to Path and click on Union. Now it's one object and I can use something else to slice out of that. I want to make these a lot larger, but I want to keep the proportion. So I'll click the lock function and then I'll just drag. Notice mine's on millimeters. Let's go ahead and change that to inches. And I do want mine to take most of the space of my board, but I'm going to make it just a little smaller. For my next word, I'm going to type gather. So I'm going to go back over here on the text tool, click on it, and then I'll just start right here. I don't want it in all caps, so I need to take my cap lock off, type the word gather, and then I need to select my font. So I'm going to click on text and font, and I'm going to use one of my all-time favorites, Amelia. I love this font. I'll go ahead and click apply. Now, before I can change the size of this, I always have to go up and use the Select tool. Now you can see it's selected, and it's still locked, so I can just drag and make this a lot larger. And prettier by making it red. Okay, so we need to weld that together. Let me show you right now what you would get if you didn't weld it. So I'm on fill and stroke. Fill is just the color of the main word, and that's red right now. I could change that down here by just clicking on a different color. Then stroke is what you can use to put an outline around it. So just to show you it's not truly welded right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on solid or flat. It added a black stroke around it, and you can see I would get cut lines here and here and between most all the letters. Everything except for the TH. For some reason it likes to put those together. I'm going to go ahead and leave the stroke on for now just so that you see that it truly does weld, but I want my stroke to be smaller, so I'll just put it on a 1. So I still have it selected. This is grayed out, so I can keep dragging this to make it larger. Now if I want to change any of these letters, I have to take the first two steps to get it welded before I can. So I'm going to go to Path, Object to Path, Object, Ungroup. Now notice everything is individual except for that TH. They look really nice, so I'm fine with that, but I want my E to be a little bigger. So I'm going to click outside of the font and just click back on that. And I think for now I'll just stretch it taller. It's locked up here, so I'll have to unlock that. I like that. Now my A, I think I'll make it just a little taller. Now what that's going to do is bring this thing down lower, kind of like this H. I'm probably okay with that. Let's see. Okay, actually that kind of gives it some balance. Then my G, I'd like to move it over just slightly. And I think I'll make it just a little bit taller. So I'm ready to go ahead and weld this together. To do so, drag your cursor all the way around it, click on Path and Union, and it's now welded. And then I can go back to the stroke, click on the stroke function here, and just get rid of that. It looks really pretty with it, but that's not the look I'm going for today, so we'll get rid of it. Okay, so this is selected. If I select it one more time, click on it again, then you see that I can actually rotate it. Now, the degree of rotation is going to show up somewhere down in here. So look down in here. I want to rotate it basically 90 degrees. So I'm going to start dragging that, and I'm going to watch down where it says rotate until it gets right at about 90 degrees. That's close enough for me. So I'll let go drag it over. Okay, it is trying to snap in places. I hate the snapping tool. So I'm going to click on this, 
and that's going to make it where it won't snap like that. Then I can just move it exactly where I want it. So I'm just going to drag this until I kind of like how it compares to the word home. I think I'll move it down just a little bit. And then I don't want it quite so wide. Notice it's going off my board. So I'm unlocked. I'll just flatten that out quite a bit and I actually think that looks better anyway. But I don't want it to be so layered here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an offset for the word gather and then I'll use that offset to slice out of the word home and then I'll put my original gather there. Sounds complex, it's really not. So this is selected. I'm going to go up to path, down here to linked offset. Click on it. Now here's my little drag bar. If this were still lit up or if this were activated, this would be a pain. So if you're trying to do this and that's activated, deactivate that because it's really, really a nuisance. So I have my grab bar and I think that looks pretty good. I'll just click outside of it, go back to the select tool. And I'm going to click here and actually it's going to drag the original one away. Then I'll select my two words over here, go up to path and difference. So let's go ahead and drag this over, see what it looks like. That looks pretty good. I'm not sure if I want to leave this little piece here. Let's see what it would look like if I erase that. So I'll drag that back away. Here's the erase tool. If your screen is smaller, you might have a little arrow down here so that you get more tools. You would click on that arrow and look for eraser. But my eraser is showing up right here. So let's click on that. Now notice I can rub on this all day. It's not going to go away. And it took me a while to figure out why. It's because this word is still selected. So I'll go to the select tool, select home, then go back to my eraser. And now this will erase just perfectly fine. Okay, so let's drag the gather back over. And I actually like that. I think it looks less busy. Let me go back. I don't know, either one's fine. For now, I'll leave it because I'm gonna cut this out of heat transfer vinyl and I can always just take that off if I want to. Last thing I'll do is go ahead and save this, file, save as. I like to save mine as plain SVGs. This is not typically the default. Typically it defaults to Inkscape SVG. I've heard that works perfectly fine on things, but I just go to plain SVG and then I'll name this. Okay, so I named that home and it's on my desktop. So I can go ahead and close out of Inkscape. When I close it, it's going to ask me close without saving. Well, I've already saved it, so I am safe to go ahead and do that.